Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault, and once again I'm coming to you with another range report. And today's range report is on something that I have been wanting to review and shoot for a very long time. Way back around SHOT Show of 2017, this pistol debuted, and I think every firearms YouTube channel had something to say about it, and everybody was like, that is the greatest pistol of all time. It's forward thinking, it's innovative. It's like taking a 1911 and blending it with a Glock. It's everything every gun owner wants. It has a completely redesigned recoil system. It's just a well-made, well-manufactured firearm that has just a great design and new features. It's just the new hotness that's gonna revolutionize the the firearms industry and I never picked one up I was always interested in them but I kind of thought okay every time some type of pistol comes out this way there's all this hype about it and it can't live up to that hype but finally I'm gonna see if this pistol actually does and today we're gonna be taking a look at the Hudson H9 manufactured by Hudson Manufacturing, which was based here in Temple, Texas. So this gun is a Texas-born firearm. Big fan of that here at the Texas Gun Vault. But as I mentioned, this gun is no longer made. It is discontinued and Hudson Manufacturing no longer exists. It's my understanding that this company was owned by a husband and wife team and they got sideways with some of their investors and parts manufacturers and I guess just coming out with a gun like this was just too much for a startup company. And so I don't necessarily think it was their fault. I'm sure running a gun business and having a big startup costs a lot of money. You got to know people. And I don't know, I guess the whole project kind of fell flat. But people to this day still rant and rave about this design and this gun. So I'm really excited to review it and see if this whole different principle of recoil operation, having the recoil spring so much lower in the pistol, really does change the way that this thing shoots. But before I get into the things that I like and don't like about this gun, as always, I wanna thank the people that make these videos possible. First and foremost is the owner of this really cool pistol. His name is Jack, but he's not the same Jack I've mentioned in the past. So we're gonna call him Jack 2, or as some people on the Texas Gun Vault call him, Full Auto Jack, because he is an SOT and has let me shoot some of his machine guns in the past. So thank you so much, Jack. As always, I want to thank my Patreon supporters, because through their monthly donations and support, they help keep the lights on around here, and I could not keep all this content coming without their support. And if you guys want to join my Patreon and see all these videos early, you can do it for as little as $1 a month, and there's a link in the description below. And as always, I want to thank my primary sponsor for every one of these range reports. His name is Mark, and he is an artist who makes some of the best grips in the world, and his company is called Brownworks. And I know if you're watching this video, you like cool and innovative firearms like the Hudson H9. In fact, you might be watching this video because you have a Hudson H9 or maybe recently purchased one. And you're like, well, those grips on that gun look pretty good, but maybe I want something different. Well, guess what? Brownworks is a company that makes grips for the Hudson H9, as well as guns like the 1911 Beretta 92, CZ75, and Browning High Power. Mark is an artist, he's a craftsman. He makes some of the best grips in the world, if not the best grips in the world. The Hudson is an innovative gun, and Brownworks is an innovative grip manufacturer. As you guys can see, he can make grips out of exotic woods, exotic materials, apply things like snake skin and alligator skin, as well as put on custom logos and custom engravings. Anything you can imagine or want, Mark can make. And so I'm gonna ask you guys to go check out his website. I'm gonna put a link in the comment section below as well as a coupon code for 10% off your first order. Go over there, see what he has to offer. Anything you can imagine he can make. So make sure you contact Mark, tell him what you're looking for. And when you do, please tell him the Texas Gun Vault sent you. 
All right, so let's talk about what this gun is. As I mentioned, it was introduced about 2017, and it blends some aspects of the 1911 and the Glock, or other striker-fired pistols. You can see from the frame of this pistol, it kind of looks like a 1911 down here. Same grip angle. We have a trigger, which goes straight into the frame. It's not a hinge trigger. And the top of this is a striker fired handgun. As you can kind of see, it has that typical plate in the background. But this is an all steel framed gun chambered in 9mm. It's also supposed to be very low recoil because, as you can see, we have this big mass here on the bottom. And that is because the recoil spring is mounted extremely low in this, allowing this to have a very low bore axis. So this is supposed to feel more like the slide is reciprocating straight back into your hand and reduce some of that muzzle flip. Another interesting thing about this gun and its design is that this is actually a modular handgun, very much like the SIG P320, where you can take out the whole trigger mechanism. Now this one is a little bit more complicated, but the actual serialized part is the trigger group and not the frame. So the whole idea of this was to later create aluminum frames and polymer frames or maybe even compact versions of this gun, but they all use that same trigger system, and that is a very innovative design, which I do think is the future of handguns, thanks to SIG, and other companies have copied that design, including Steyr. I also mentioned this frame as it sits is an all metal, all steel frame. So it is a little bit on the heavy side. But once again, if you like 1911s and you like guns that have that heavy steel feel, you're going to like this. And another thing worth mentioning is the magazines. These magazines are based off of the Smith & Wesson 5900 series. They do have a Hudson base plate, but I know people were always concerned. What if I need to get new magazines because this is a disc continued gun. Well, you can use Smith & Wesson 5900 series magazine. So that's a lot about this gun. So let's talk about the things that I like and don't like. And as always, let's talk about the things that I like first. And of course, that's going to be the innovation. Very rarely do we see gun companies today coming out with something new. I mean, we do have the tried and true gun designs of the past, the 1911s, the Glocks. And so when new companies come out with a new gun, many times they're just derivatives or variations of those other guns that we already know and love. They just have different cosmetics to them. Maybe the slide design is a little bit different, or maybe the Grip texture is a little bit different, but at the heart of that gun, it's still a 1911, or it's still a SIG P226, or it's still a Glock in some way. But this gun is definitely something different. I think the designers of this gun said, hey, we have different types of people looking for different things in the gun community. Can we design something that brings everything together? The things about the 1911 that everyone likes were the things that we like about modern handguns like Glock, and that's what they did. This was a forward-thinking design, designing something completely new from the ground up. And not only is it innovative, it seems to be very well built. You know, Caltech is a very innovative company, but their products literally fall apart at the range. They're made cheaply. But when you hold one of these, you realize this is a really high quality manufactured firearm. Even the packaging is really, really nice. Here's the box that it comes in. It has cut out foam. You pull this out. You have your owner's manual, which looks very professional and nice. It just looks like a fantastic firearm just from the packaging alone. The whole thing is put together so well. And I really like that. It's innovative and high quality. I've already mentioned this is a modular design, so I really feel like if they ever sell the patents to these, or maybe they've already sold the patents to other people and they come out with a gun like this, it is already set up to do so many things with, just like the SIG P320. And if you like the 1911, which I have found out people that like the 1911, one of their big detractions away from Glock is it just doesn't feel right. Well, this is an all steel framed pistol. And with this grip angle, it feels like a 1911. But you get that more modern striker fired pistol design. And I really feel like this could have blended both those factions in the gun community, brought people from the 1911 world 
into the modern era, but I think also could have taken people that only prefer the Wonder Nines of today and make them appreciate the 1911 more. I like that. It's just a great blend and balance. It is just a cool pistol just holding it here on the workbench. It looks modern, but it doesn't look gimmicky. The last thing about this gun that I really like is the size. I know this is supposed to be the full-size gun, and they were eventually going to come out with a compact one, but this really feels like a compact pistol. While I haven't compared it exactly side-by-side -side with a Glock 19, it feels about the same size as a Glock 19, which I feel is about the perfect size for an all-around handgun. It's big enough to use as a target gun, and it's small enough to carry in most capacities. It's just the perfect size. Very ergonomic with this 1911 grip angle. It is just a great feeling gun in my hand. So now let's talk about a couple things about this gun that maybe I don't like. And these two issues are actually going to deal with the trigger, which many people think is one of the greatest qualities of this gun. But let's talk about the trigger here and a couple things I have noticed. Now the first thing I'm going to tell you is when you activate this trigger, we do have a blade safety, kind of like a Glock, which obviously is omitted in a 1911. It's right here. I don't think this is needed, especially in a gun like this. Having a frame mounted safety or a thumb safety would be a better way to go. But I understand why they probably had this. It does add kind of a weird feeling and maybe you can hear it actually makes the trigger kind of clanky sounding and I don't like that. But that doesn't mean this is going to be a bad trigger or have a bad pull. But I am noticing that sound. It does kind of annoy me a little bit and I'm not a big fan of that safety. Now let me show you what the trigger reset looks like on this gun. So here is the initial pull. There's all that clank and kind of slop because of it. And then we have the pull. And actually, I'm glad that I caught this on camera because that did not pull. One of the things I have noticed, and I forgot to check before pulling that trigger, is this slide is not 100% in battery. I have noticed if you do not let this slide slam home, it doesn't always go into battery. But now we're into battery. And so here we go. Let's pull that trigger. Pretty light, pretty crisp. And now let's reset it. And that slide is all the way home. And here's the reset. It's very short. I do like that. Very much like a 1911. I would say this trigger feels way more like a 1911 than that of a Glock. But yeah, once again, I'm glad I caught that on camera because I also feel like this gun has a little bit of a hesitation to go into battery. And I really didn't experience that at the range, but when you are racking the gun, and especially loading that first round, that could be an issue and you need to make sure it always goes into battery. And I don't think that's necessarily a flaw in the design, but just something to be aware of. Now, I've talked about this trigger and the things that I don't like about it, but now let me adjust the camera. Let's check out the trigger pull weight on this with the trigger pull gauge, see what that's all about, and then we're gonna get this thing to the range. All right, so we got the Lyman trigger pull weight gauge out and let's check and see what this Hudson's trigger is like. As always, let's go ahead and drop the magazine, ensure there is no ammunition in there, set that aside. And of course, visually inspect the chamber, make sure the gun is safe, looks like we are good. And then of course, make sure that the slide is in battery. And there we go. So let's turn this thing on, let's clear the averages and let's pull the trigger a few times and see what it is. So our, for our first pull, four pounds, 8.2 ounces. Four pounds, 11.3 ounces. Five pounds, 1.4 ounces. Four pounds, 7.7 .7 ounces. And then finally, four pounds, 10.9 ounces for an average of 
four pounds, 11.1 ounces. So a pretty darn good trigger pull. I think it is a perfect trigger for duty or carry. It is not too heavy, it is not too light. It's right in that sweet spot, in my personal opinion. And what makes this trigger so nice is that trigger comes straight back into the frame just like a 1911. All right, so let's get this gun to the range. I'm gonna load up one of these magazines and give you guys my first impressions. And this is my first time ever shooting a Hudson H9, so I'm excited to see if this gun recoils like everybody says it does. So here we go, one magazine, seven yards, and my first shots. Now, in the beginning of this range report, I talked about how one of the things people said about this firearm was that it's going to recoil and feel very different than many other modern handguns. And it actually does live up to that hype. I think the combination of the low bore axis and that recoil spring that is mounted in front of the trigger guard, it really makes a huge huge difference. It feels great when you're firing it. Now, of course, nine millimeter is not that hard of a hitting caliber, but the recoil of this feels so soft. It barely has any muzzle flip whatsoever. The gun also feels very natural to point and shoot, and that's because of that 1911 grip angle, and the gun really seems to be exceptionally accurate for me. The only thing that I have noticed that I don't like is loading these magazines. Now, I didn't load them on camera but before I did I load this all the way to 15 this is one of the very few magazines that I have to have assistance with with those mag loaders so I was kind of surprised I mean I guess I could do it but normally loading a Glock 19 up to 15 rounds yeah it gets a little bit tight at the very end this one was almost impossible the spring on this is really really strong maybe it has to be that way for a reason but if you're gonna top these mags off I would highly recommend getting one of those mag assists. So I had to use it on this and normally I don't. All right, so now let's double the distance on this target. I'm gonna go for the head on this silhouette and I wanna see at a further distance, can I keep this group as good as it is in those first shots? So here we go, double the distance and another magazine. And for me, this is such a great pistol to shoot. It just feels so good. I'm pretty happy with those results. It's still accurate. It feels good in my hands. I really like these sights. It does come with a set of night sights in the front, or I guess a single dot in the front. The back is just a U that is blacked out, but they're very usable. I like them. The front dot might be a little bit on the big side, but now that I'm shooting the gun a little bit slower, the sound of this trigger and its clank, yeah, it's starting to annoy me a little bit. I kind of feel like that could have been refined just a little bit more. And even though it's just the safety, I kind of feel like that adds slop and a weird take up before you get to the wall on that. 
and I prefer these triggers not to have that type of sound. But the trigger does feel really good. You just have to kind of get used to it. But the recoil of this gun is absolutely outstanding. All right, so now let's set out the target about as far as I can shoot at this indoor range, about 20 or 25 yards. And I'm going to bench rest this or at least shoot it up against a barrier. Now, when the target is at this distance and my range honestly is kind of dark, I can't always see the points of impact. So I'm just going to put the sights right on the center of the target and I'm going to put a whole other magazine down range and just see what type of group that I can get. So here we go, 20 to 25 yards bench resting. And as expected, that group did open up, but as I said, I couldn't adjust for it because I can't see where those points of impact were at that distance and in the darker range. Now, also to talk about how the gun is shooting a little bit to the left, I think it has to do a little bit with the length of pull, which of course is the distance from the back strap to the front of the trigger. It's pretty short in this gun, which normally I like. However, this accentuates one of the problems I have as a shooter, and I'm very aware of it. I do have a little bit bigger hands, and sometimes Sometimes with guns with shorter lengths of pull, I put a little bit too much finger into that trigger guard and my finger rubs on the side of the frame and kind of pulls the gun a little bit to the left. So that was probably honestly me. I have to be a little bit more aware of that and make sure the pad of my finger is pulling that trigger back perfectly. So that was probably more me than the gun itself. But all the rounds were still on target. I think that was functional, practical accuracy for a gun like this and how most likely you would use it. All right, so now the next test I want to do is going to be the hollow point test. Now you may own this gun and want to carry it. Now sometimes these more modern design guns, they overlook the feed ramps and sometimes they don't always feed hollow points. But that's what we're here to test. So I'm going to put some hollow points through this 115 grain. So these things are going to be going down range a little bit faster. Is it going to change the point of impact and the accuracy of this gun? Is it going to change the recoil? And just will it run hollow points? So let's find out. And as expected, it ran perfectly fine. A high quality gun like this should have no problems running those 115 grain hollow points. And they honestly felt and shot just like the 124s that I was shooting earlier in this range report. So it didn't change the point of impact, the accuracy is still there, and the way that this gun recoils, it's exactly the same. Very impressed with that. All right, so the next test I'm going to do is kind of a combination of three tests. It's the point shooting test, the quick mag change test, and the mag dump. 
up, which really isn't a test, it's just me having some fun. Because these magazines only hold 15 rounds, I didn't think that would be a very impressive mag dump. So I'm going to dump two 15 round magazines and I'm going to combine that with the quick mag change test because you might want to carry this as a defensive handgun or who knows, maybe you can carry this in some type of competition shooting. And so I just want to see, number one, can I shoot this gun fast? Number two, can I change the magazine out fast, get the gun back in action? And then number three, because the gun is so ergonomic, can I naturally point shoot this? So when I do these tests, I typically don't use the sights. I'm thinking about if I had to use this gun in a self-defense scenario, I'm just gonna point it at the target. Is it a naturally pointing firearm? So here we go. I guess 30 rounds as fast as I can with a quick mag change. And I'm gonna take that all day long. And let me tell you, this gun, number one, is a lot of fun to shoot. Number two, it's a naturally shooting firearm. I really do feel like, because that 1911 style grip, it just points naturally. I feel like I have the gun under control the entire time and without even having to use the sights, pretty much the rounds go where I want them to. And this gun can be shot really, really fast. So I'm impressed with it. The trigger is pretty darn good, even if it is a little bit on the clanky loud side but overall I am very impressed with the performance of this gun I did not have one hiccup failure to feed failure to fire nothing with this gun I have been blown away by it and so my impressions of this gun are extremely positive so what are my final thoughts on the Hudson H9, the gun of the future that unfortunately is no longer made well let me tell you You've probably heard about all the hype of this gun and people saying what this gun can do. Well, let me tell you, it does meet all the hype. I am very impressed with this gun. This gun feels so much different, but in a very positive way than pretty much any other gun I have ever shot. It has a great look to it. You hold it, you realize the manufacturing techniques that went into this are top quality. The company was innovative. This is what kel I think, was supposed to be the whole time. An innovative company making quality guns. And Hudson did it. It's just sad that they were not able to survive. And I have heard rumors that they did sell their patents and some companies still make parts for them. And I hope in the future some company will take this and run with it because this is a fantastic gun. It honestly, in my opinion, revolutionizes the modern firearms market because this is something different. It is awesome. And after shooting this, this is going to be one of those guns that... I think I'm going to have to try to find one for my personal collection. I really want one of these. This thing is awesome. What a great blend and balance between a 1911 and a modern striker fired pistol. So on my star system, how would I rate the Hudson H9? Well, the gun was accurate. It was fun to shoot. No problems whatsoever. Feels great in my hand. Seems to be well built, high quality five out of five stars. This gun exceeded my expectations. What a great firearm. And thank you so much, Jack, for lending it to the channel, a gun that I have always wanted to shoot and review. The Hudson H9, five out of five stars. What a great gun. And if you own one of these, let me know in the comments section below what you think and does it shoot as well for you as it does for me. And if you don't own one, do you want one? Because I know I sure do. But because the company's out of business, there's not many of them floating around out there. So I guess we're all going to be looking for one. So let me know what you think in the comments section below. And as always, thanks for watching. A super long amount of ammunition. Oh,